look at this. Did I pay you to sit up here or what? You just stay right there and you be as noisy as you want. Do you want to know why I wrote a book? I wrote a book because I was mad. I'm mad at Facebook. Facebook a few months ago said, well, you know what? Now, for your audience that you've cultivated, all those likes on your page, now you have to pay to access them. And I don't think that's right. It's and not. You're right, it's not. And so guess what I did? I wrote a book to teach you how to get around all of that. You see, the majority of tweets out there are garbage. Isn't that cute? Look at the little bird in the trash can. <laughs> I know, right? The number one mistake people make on Twitter is they use it as a tool for broadcast. They use it as a tool for broadcast, which makes me sad. Because guess what? No one cares what you have to say. They don't. They'll pretend. Um, you know, your friends and family will support you and help you and like your page, but that's not going to grow your business. So we need to change our mindset. Something you do for yourself, something you get enjoyment out of doing yourself, I call a hobby. Something you do for other people and charge money for it, that's a brand. This can't be about you. We don't care what kind of yogurt you're eating for breakfast. We're going to use Twitter as a tool not for broadcast. We're going to use it as a tool for conversation. You see that big smiley face? That's me. So I'm going to go through the three big no-nos that everyone today is going to fix. Number one, oh, look at that. That looks delicious, doesn't it? Breakfast. We don't care. Don't tweet about it. We don't care. Don't tweet about it unless you're Gordon Ramsay. Because Gordon Ramsay's brand is food. And so he gets to tweet about it, but you don't, unless it's your brand. Let's move on. Number two, most of your profiles are a true disaster. Get it? Tornado. Huh? Making sure you're not sleeping. Display picture. That looks like me on a good day, not every day. <laughs> oh, boy. That's what, I, that's what I don't want to see. That's a pixelated display picture. And if I see any of you following me and tweeting me with that, I'm going to be on your case. Your photos, they take the place of the in-person interaction. And so your photos have to be nice. OK, let's talk about your cover photo. Twitter just changed this. The new dimensions are 1,500 pixels wide by 500 high. Let's talk about your bio. And I know some of you have rewritten your bios after the last design camp, and I love that. I have a very specific, as you already know, I'm fairly bossy. I have a very specific formula I want you to follow for your bios. Two sentences. Write that down. First sentence, who you are and why I should care. And the second sentence gives me some indication of your personality. Remember, there are two versions of us, the in-person experience and the online version. The best branding, personal branding, is when we can replicate the in-person experience as closely as possible. And if I don't get the luxury of having you in my face to have a conversation online, you kind of have to overcompensate a little bit for that. So, and just make sure you add your location. I've seen universe, I've seen everywhere. Good for you, but people actually use the Twitter search tool, and you should as well, to find people in their area, and location is a nice thing to have in common with a potential client. Number three, you follow your friends on Twitter, or you follow celebrities. Do that on Facebook. And so we're rethinking the way we're using Twitter. And I go into detail in the book on exactly what that means. Your news feed will become completely useless because you're going to be following more people. Um, but you're going to make use of Twitter lists. And I won't go into detail on it now because I go into more detail in it in the book. Um, but the whole point is we want to increase your numbers, right? Think about this. If you're following, following on Twitter 500 people, and you have two followers, what are you? A loser. You're a loser. Think about it. 
If you're following 500 people and only two people are following back, you're like the creepy person in the corner of the room at the party <laughs> that everyone is avoiding. We want to position you for growth and to make more money. I'm going to use an example. We've been hearing about interior design all day, every day. So let's just, let's just use an example in a different industry. If you're a chef, I need to pay attention to my competitors, direct competitors and indirect competitors. Direct competitors offer the same service or satisfy the same need, whereas an indirect competitor offers a different service that satisfies the same need. So maybe a restaurant would be an indirect competitor. You also want to be aware of like brands. They're not necessarily competitors. These could be restaurants or chefs on the other side of the world. Right? They're not competing against you, but we want to know what they're doing. We want to know what they're doing right, and we want to know what they're doing wrong. So we let them waste time and money so that you can learn it without having to go through the same thing. And finally, you want to be aware of brand heroes, I call them. These are the people that are a few steps above you that are doing really amazing things. What are they doing right, and what are they doing wrong? This is not rocket science. No, it's not. Oh my gosh, what's that right there? That's my book. And so I have to wrap up now, but thank you all for letting me be here.